Good morning. Uh, good morning and uh, um, welcome. Thank you uh, for inviting me and giving me the uh, opportunity to speak at this uh, Congress. I'd like to just start by uh, stating that uh, I'm a specialist in physical medicine and rehabilitation and have been involved in the treatment and management of patients with uh, chronic musculoskeletal and neuropathic pain for uh, uh, approximately uh, 25 to 30 years. Um, most of the patients that I see have been referred to me by general practitioners, rheumatologists, and orthopedic surgeons. The um, typical scenario is that the, the patient that I see has had chronic pain for um, approximate, it can be from months to a number of years, this uh, individual has been treated sometimes with or, with, with or without surgery and uh, has also been treated with uh, numerous medications and has also been through various types of muscular rehabilitation strategies. None of these strategies have worked and the major problem is that the patient has a very intense, severe, persistent pain and uh, cannot tolerate any type of activity. I, I have to say that in Canada at least, this is a very significant problem and um, remains a major challenge in medicine. Uh, in my estimation, working in the field now for 25 to 30 years, it's still a problem that we as doctors do not adequately manage. About 12 years ago, um, I came into the knowledge of a new treatment called pulse signal therapy, which I'm going to introduce you to, which had the advantages of being non-invasive without side effects, and there were already a number of double-blinded uh, randomized trials that had been published in the literature that indicated that this treatment had the possibility of, re of um, reducing pain in the chronic musculoskeletal neurogenic patient. Pulse signal therapy uh, is safe, painless, and a non-invasive therapy, and was, treated to, uh, was developed to treat degenerative diseases such as osteoarthrosis, bone and joint injuries, and pain associated with musculoskeletal trauma. I should add that in most of these patients, if you did investigations, you would often find evidence of osteoarthrosis in the joint of the spine, and usually evidence of trauma. Um, more often than not, a diagnosis of soft tissue injury was also given with, with different subcategories, such as uh, fibromyalgia, myofascial pain, tendonitis, and so on. The, the basis of pulse signal therapy, uh, which, by the way, uh, also has a generic name of pulsed electromagnetic field therapy, in case people have seen that as well, but it's a, a specific type of pulsed electromagnetic field therapy. The, the basic understanding of the physiology behind the treatment is that when you compress or put a mechanical force through bone, uh, it creates a current called a piezoelectric current. Similarly, if you put a mechanical force through cartilage, there is a separation of charges in the cartilage uh, and you get a current and an electric field with a particular direction or a particular polarity. It is very important for people who function, who are active and who put weight through their spine and joints, it's very important that when you put the forces through your joints, that there's the appropriate transduction of that mechanical force into the appropriate electrical field with the appropriate intensity and direction. This, this repetitive forces through the joints lead to um, maintenance and repair. Osteoarthritis or osteoarthritis and trauma damage cartilage and this mechanical tr transduction is inhibited or distorted. You don't get the maintenance and you don't get the repair that you need and you get pain. 
pulse signal therapy restores these separation of charges or the streaming potentials, as they're called, without compression. It is a biomagnetic treatment. The magnetic pulse uh, is pulsed through the joint, and without force, it restores the appropriate electrical field and polarity that you would normally get if you were putting the appropriate force through the joint. It was commercially introduced initially in Germany. These are typical examples of the types of apparatus that you can get, and you can see that the pulse signal therapy is able to be focused on different parts of the spine and virtually any joint that has cartilage or synovium in the body. The protocol for treatment is quite simple. It's usually um, nine one-hour treatments on consecutive days. Certain joints require 12 hours of treatment. The mechanism of pain reduction, at least in the short term, is, is hypothesized to be electrical induction, which attenuates pain in the C fibers. Uh, there are a number of research papers that are now validating that, that this repetitive pulsation of the magnetic pulse, which is then converted to an electrical pulse, is what, is what gives the short-term analgesic effect. The long-term analgesic effect, which usually takes weeks and even months to occur, is the restoration of the appropriate streaming potentials and therefore the restoration of the appropriate cartilage in the joint over time. Uh, a couple of years ago, I did uh, an open-label study in which I looked at about 400 patients that I had treated in my clinic, and I divided these patients between those that had, from what we could see, pain due to osteoarthrosis as much as, uh, primarily and pain due to soft tissue injury primarily. As you can see, there's roughly, uh, roughly about an equal percentage of patients that had osteoarthrosis as the primary diagnosis, and roughly the same number who had soft tissue injury. In terms of the joints that were uh, studied, you can see that um, the uh, neck uh, or the cervical spine, the back, the lumbar spine, uh, the hip, and the knee were the primary joints that we treated with this particular intervention. We, we looked at pain in this particular study with a four-point scale where I've, I've, I've listed the, the, the particular qualifiers. Zero would be no pain, all the way to, to a level four, extreme pain. So it's a visual analog scale in which we ask patients before, after, at six weeks, six months, and one year to give us their scores. In terms of uh, the duration or age of the injury, you can see that in the, the, the patients that, uh, that presented with soft tissue injuries, uh, the, the duration was often uh, around a median of five to six years, whereas those with osteoarthrosis, their median age of injury, if, if trauma was the uh, particular uh, event that started the pain, was about 10 years. In terms of the actual age of the patient, as would be expected, patients with soft tissue injury tended to be younger. Those with osteoarthrosis tended to be in the older years. Uh, in terms of uh, presenting intensity of pain on that scale of zero to four, um, it, it turns out that female patients tended generally to present with higher levels of pain. And, uh, this, this applied both in terms of pain attributed to osteoarthritis as well as pain attributed to soft tissue injury. I won't go into the complexities of this matrix, but just to understand that right at the beginning, you would expect your higher level numbers of pain to be in this region of the graph. And, and so that's the, the blue region. And you'd expect uh, as time goes on, if you get lowering of pain intensity over time, that the numbers would go into the green, the green part of this matrix. And you can see that about one year after treatment, when we looked at the, the pain intensities, uh, the generally pain levels dropped um, over time. And we were able to calculate that there was approximately a 67% chance of at least one drop in the pain scale over time, and 56% uh, of the patients dropped two levels of pain. It was interesting also to compare the time that it took for patients to respond to this treatment 
osteoarthritic pa pain that was attributed to osteoarthritis, these patients seem to respond to the magnetic induction faster than the patients with soft tissue injury, which was counterintuitive. I, I would have thought the opposite. Uh, but by six months, when we were constantly looking at, at these patients and following them, them up and looking at the pain scales, they were approximately at the, same, at the same point in terms of pain improvement. A Brazilian study was done uh, a few years later in 2007, looking primarily at, at pain associated with osteoarthritis. And here we have all four graphs. We have the one uh, where you took the pain scores immediately after the treatment. Uh, sorry, yes, immediately after six weeks, six months, and one year. And the first, the first column, the, the column that's mostly on the left-hand side, um, shows that about um, over 40% were um, showing high levels of, of pain. And you can see that as you go across the graph from left to right, across the slide, you can see that the pain levels progressively drop. And what is interesting, if you, if you have some, some criticism, for example, with respect to placebo, is this just a treatment that is giving a placebo effect? What is interesting is that over the year, the pain levels continue to drop progressively, which would be not the type of pattern you would see with placebo. With a placebo effect, you have an immediate effect of the placebo, and over time, the placebo effect dies out. Whereas in, in, with this particular treatment, there is progressive improvement over time. We, we decided that it was not enough to just look at evaluating um, the effects of pain. We didn't want to just look at how pain dropped. We were also interested in function. It turns out that, and I'm sure that's a common goal of all doctors, that we're not just interested in the elimination of a symptom. We're as much, or if not more interested, in returning the patient to full function or to as much function as possible. So therefore, it becomes incumbent upon us is, is that whatever intervention we're suggesting for the management of a patient, you need to also evaluate function as much as you evaluate symptom reduction. So we decided that we would use the same scale, zero to four, for function as we use for pain intensity. Uh, functional parameters that we looked at were duration of sleep, um, distance of walking, duration of sitting, duration of standing, mood and mood change. We also took, we, we took for each patient, we took the total amount of pain reduction, if, if they dropped one, uh, one um, one slot in the pain scale, that would be 25%. So we, we, we converted everything into percentages and we looked at the ratio of pain improvement to function improvement in our patients. In the we looked at the last uh, approximately 60 patients that we treated and we found an interesting thing. First of all, if you look at the most left-hand column, the left-hand column on this slide, there we have pain, the ratio of pain over function is greater than one. This indicates that in this particular column, 22% of the patients had more improvement in pain than they had in function. In the second column where you have the ratio of P over F is one, it indicates that 12% um, that of the patients had equal improvement in pain and function. And if you look at all the columns, it's obvious that pain and function are not one-to-one. -one. There's not a linear correlation between reduction in pain and improvement in function. And, and in the third column, which is in the middle, uh, you can see that about 14% um, of the patients had more improvement in function than they had in pain. And in fact, the, the, the most right-hand columns, the two most right-hand columns, show you that if pain is reduced but function doesn't, you have a substantial number of patients that they have an improvement in pain but no improvement in function. And what we can only infer from that is that these are patients where we've reduced the pain but they need now rehabilitation in order to improve their function. They are probably weak and that's in fact corroborated in our practice where we now can take patients that formerly could not do any type of muscular rehabilitation because of pain, when we've taken the pain away, we are able to reintroduce them into physiotherapy and we're able to get them back to functioning states. The final column on the right-hand side shows where pain doesn't change at all, 
but their function improves. And the, the inference from that is that they, uh, the patient himself or herself, because it's a sensory subjective experience, is not able to clearly notice a change in the pain, but yet there's an improvement in terms of sleep, stand, walk, and etc. Yarov, just in the last few minutes, typical cases that I've, uh, that I've seen in my practice, just to give you an idea of the, of the sorts of patients that we look at. The first patient is 76 years old. She had a traumatic soft tissue injury to the right sacroiliac joint and muscles. This was a lady that fell down on a metal, on a metal surface. All investigations were clean. They didn't show evidence of osteoarthritis. They didn't show evidence of fracture. Uh, there was no surgical indication for treatment. She was totally re uh, non-responsive to medication, including neuropathic medications, and uh, was totally and completely disabled for six months by pain. Any attempt to put her into muscular rehabilitation increased the pain exponentially, and she was non-compliant. Um, she, uh, as I said, she noticed increased pain with activity or weight bearing. And six months after we'd uh, applied the magnetic induction treatment or the pulse signal therapy, the, you can see that the pain intensity, pain frequent, frequency, the neurological symptoms that were associated were, were eliminated 100% while her functional parameters also improved dramatically. And I can tell you that this has persisted with time. There's no change. It, the, the, the progressive, the, the improvement that occurred has not changed. It remains, uh, it remains improved. In the second case, 25-year-old female with an injury to the right knee joint, as described, she had over four years of chronic pain, totally non-responsive to any type of muscular treatment. Um, surgery was not indicated, and uh, she was on a variety of medications that were, that were giving her side effects, but were not uh, eliminating pain. At most, we find that heat, rest, uh, are probably the two best treatments and give only a transient relief in, in many of these patients. Um, six months after doing the pulse signal therapy or the pulsed electromagnetic field therapy, the pain intensity decreased, 75% pain, pain frequency decreased 75%, swelling went down, uh, and there was major improvements in function. Um, this patient is 50 years old, and here you see evidence of osteoarthritic changes in the spine. We've seen many patients with spinal stenosis. On, on many occasions, when we refer these patients to orthopedic surgeons, there is a, a, a non-indication for surgery, often because of multi-level changes or risk factors associated with surgery. She had over uh, nearly two years of pain, again, non-responsive to medication or physical type therapies and uh, major limitations in range and function, and there was again a, a positive result. Um, in this particular case, uh, RP is a 52-year-old male with a mechanical injury to the pelvis. When we say out of alignment, it's often a muscular reason. There's a spasm of the muscle that pulls the spine or the pelvis out of alignment. Uh, the pain re often refers to different regions of the back. 15-month history of pain, no response to physical measures, uh, non-indication for surgery, and, um, and medication is, is of little effect. Um, six months, no change on the pain scales, but major improvement in function. In this particular patient, 64-year-old female, soft tissue injury, uh, to the neck and shoulders, but also evidence of a disc herniation in the neck, but no radiculopathy. Uh, nearly three years of pain. Pain triggered primarily by sudden forces to the neck or sudden movements of the neck, unable to attain full range. Various uh, treatments uh, are only temporarily effective. Pulse signal therapy provides a permanent uh, improvement in her pain and major permanent improvement in function. 36-year-old female, injury to the lumbar spine, as you can see, major changes of osteoarthritis, similar improvements in pain and function. 
Finally, uh, a 50-year-old uh, female with a, a joint injury resulting in contracture. She could not function because of pain. By eliminating pain, we could not restore the, we couldn't reverse the contracture, but she was able to use her hand because we eliminated the pain. So in conclusion, the major, uh, I, I would say the major promise of this treatment is the fact that we can reduce debilitating pain and reintroduce functional treatments that get the patient back to some form of functioning life. Thank you.